All right, guys, today we're going to be looking at the phenomenon of choreographed group dance scenes in movies. Like most things are, these scenes can be either good or bad. We'll start by throwing up a few examples of good scenes. If you absolutely must have large groups of people spontaneously bursting out into inexplicably well-synchronized dance routines, this is how you do it. At the triumphant baby's big moment end of the movie where Swayze and the gang basically drop the mic on all the stiff older parents who disapprove of such things as their teenage children dancing like they're fucking, banging dance instructors in their 40s, getting botched back alley abortions. Wait, what was I talking about? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, the Dirty Dancers, they win the day, throw down on the entire Kellerman's Country Club institution, and then join their sexy leader, Johnny, in a synchronized dance, kind of rubbing it in the face of all the suits and frowny parents. My thoughts on this dance scene. This is fine. It makes sense. It's a dance movie about professional dancers. They very well may have practiced their choreographed victory dance at some point over their summer at Kellerman's. You don't know that they didn't. This is fine. It's a wacky movie that has the occasional scene of reality-defying stuff happen on screen for comedic purposes. Plus, when Ray Charles tells you to shake your tail feather, you have to shake your tail feather. This is fine. If this happened within the events of the actual story, it would have been out of place with the overall tone. It would have broken the reality, but they threw it in as a comedic scene during the end credits. So, all good. This scene works because they're doing a dance routine that every single human being in the entirety of first world countries has seen. Of these people, most over the age of 30 have actually done the dance at one time or another. You only have to disbelieve a tiny bit of reality for this scene to work, so it's good. I think Michael Jackson is guilty of the charges against him. No, man. He made Thriller. <laughs> thriller. This, this is fine. It's a stupid movie where stupid things happen all the time for comedic purposes. This group dance doesn't break reality because there's really no established reality to break. It's fucking Good Burger. Notably, this dancing scene was wildly discordant, grossly out of place, broke the reality of the established rules and physics of the Ferris Bueller universe, and yet ultimately was perfectly fine. To explain this, I'll cite the rule of cool. We, the audience, go happily along with it because Ferris is just so damn awesome. Quick reminder here for everybody watching, if you like the content, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Okay, now we're going to be looking at the other side of the coin. We're going to be looking at the bad synchronized dance routines. Our first example helps to demonstrate that just because it's a bad dance scene, this doesn't automatically mean it's a bad movie. Dr. Detroit, a truly wonderful comedic gem from the early 80s, one of Dan Aykroyd's truly classic movies. All this praise aside, I have issues with the dance scene. I mean, look at this. At no time in the 48 hours that this movie takes place in, did Professor Clifford Scridlow have a chance to meet up with all those pimps and hoes to practice doing this dance? It makes zero sense in the story. Okay, yes, you could argue that the movie is a comedy. To this I say, not good enough. This movie is pretty firmly grounded in reality, excepting a few gunfire and combat-related problems that are kind of common in comedies anyway. Now, you could defend the dancing with the ultimate trump card. James Brown is on stage singing. To this, I, I really have no defense. If James Brown was performing live 20 feet away from me and I was surrounded by a bunch of pimps and hoes at a pimp convention, I very well might find myself leading a synchronized dance. Truthfully, there are good arguments for this scene being in either the good or bad category. This movie was kind of a poor example for this video, as it does a really bad job of illustrating the point I'm attempting to make. Actually, I kind of just wanted to throw it in because Dr. Detroit is a really great movie that not enough people have seen, and I just watched it last week. All right, back on topic. Bad dance scenes. We'll start with the worst offender of all, Mr. Freddie Prinze Jr. She's All That in 1999, 
Boys and Girls in 2000. I mean, what is this shit? Two movies, both coming out within a year of each other, both with silly, cringy, reality-breaking, synchronized dance scenes. The likely explanation is that director Robert Icecove, who Iscove, Icecove, who did both movies, he just really, really likes silly shit like this in his movies. In the first instance, they try to explain the freak occurrence by having Usher Raymond, who's DJing the prom, give out a throwaway line. Yeah, 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 earthquakes. Right about now, we're going to do that dance I taught you. And I know you've been practicing. Ah, yes, of course, that explains it. He's been teaching them this dance. They've had practice sessions leading up to prom after school where he's been teaching all of the other students how to dance synchronized. Let's see what IMDB can tell us about this director. Oh, look, he's also responsible for Save the Last Dance, as well as From Justin to Kelly. This is truly a man with a vision. Now, opinions obviously will vary, but I think both of the previous two movies were complete shit. Next, we're going to be looking at some good movies that, despite being good overall, also committed the egregious sin of choreographed synchronized dance scenes. 2001's A Night Tale was a good movie. It had early Heath Ledger, early Alan Tudyk, early Paul Bettany, early Mark Addy. Look at this. You have the Joker sharing screen time with The Vision, Hoban Washburn, and Robert freaking Baratheon. For purposes of the theme of this video, we have to put all that positive stuff aside and focus in on this one scene. What the hell were they doing? When did they practice this? How is the medieval band with all their lutes and flutes and stuff cranking out a flawless rendition of David Bowie's Golden Years? Is that David Bowie on the mic? It makes no sense. It absolutely shatters the previously established and mutually agreed upon rules of this movie's universe. I mean, okay, true, the opening scene had a bunch of filthy peasants and serfs doing this. So that was kind of a bit of a preview for what was to come. But honestly, that scene was just as bad for all the same reasons. As cool as it is to imagine Freddie Mercury finding a time machine, teaming up with Ziggy Stardust and going on time-traveling adventures, sprinkling their greatest hits throughout various eras in human history. A actually, I I've completely lost my train of thought. What was the point I was trying to make? That, that would make a really great movie, actually. Okay, so good movie, bad dance scene. Let's jump to 1992. Encino Man, early Brendan Fraser, Sean Astin before he rocked the shit as Samwise Gamgee. Strangely, Pauly Shore was actually the biggest name attached to the movie at that time. Say that in your head a few times and really let that sink in. Pauly Shore was the big star of this movie. Check out the fresh knocks. Wee's in the juice. Ow! Buddy. <laughs> I love Encino Man. It's just so stupid, you can't help but love it. But at the triumphant epilogue taking place at, you guessed it, the big high school dance, we get this scene. You can't do that. These guys never practiced that dance. And yes, I know it seems weird hearing me rail against how reality breaking it is to have a synchronized dance scene in a movie that features an unfrozen caveman protagonist. It is weird. Maybe I just hate eye rolling cringiness or something. All right, let's go back another decade to 1984. This next example also fits into the category of great movie, bad dance scene. 1984's Footloose is an absolute classic. It was a formative experience during my childhood, and I must have watched it over a hundred times throughout my life. And the climax, the big dance at the end, that is purely awesome. Hey, hey, what's this I see? I thought this was a party! Let's dance! It's the perfect payoff to the setup of the entire plot of the movie. But, at least if you're me, you might find yourself asking some uncomfortable questions. Damn near every student at that dance grew up 
in the little bohunk footloose town where dancing has been outlawed. So I have to ask, how are they such good dancers? How does this guy know how to break dance? How does this guy know how to do such a freaky awesome robot isolation kind of dance? A and look, they're all synchronized dancing. How are they doing that? My prom did not look like that, and I grew up in a town where everybody could dance. Willard was the only one we ever saw learning how to dance, which, by the way, was the best sequence of the whole movie. Did the other students hold practice sessions? Do they maybe know Usher? Was Footloose the first offender? Is Ren McCormick somehow responsible for all the shit that came later? There may be other earlier examples out there. None come to mind right now. If you can think of any, leave a comment. So anyway, in summation, as perniciously evil, as jarringly inexplicable choreographed dance scenes are, at least they seem to have mostly died out. We thankfully live in a post not another teen movie world. It's funny, isn't it? You would never suspect that everyone at this school is a professional dancer. Where these scenes have been mocked enough that they no longer appear. So that'll do it for today's video, guys. I thank you for going on this journey into madness with me. It's been a hoot. Stay tuned for more intriguing and insightful comment in the future.